Hi, this is David at Mash IT. Now I've been asked quite a few times that since I've got in this XPS 9710, could I compare it against the Dell X17? And it's kind of the age old question. Do you buy a work laptop that can game or do you buy a gaming laptop that can also do your work? Because with the advances we've made over the years, both of these can do both roles really well. So we're gonna have a look at both of these today. We're gonna to see which one is the best fit for you. Now, before we actually start comparing, I just want to very quickly talk about the pricing. Now, if you've got discrete GPUs in both of these machines, because you can actually buy the XPS without a discrete GPU, if you configure them both the discrete GPUs, they both start in the UK at £2,100. And for your £2,100, they're both 11th gen 11,800H CPUs, but the gaming laptop naturally comes with a much better GPU. This starts with a 3060, whereas the XPS starts with a, just a basic 3050. And if you do plan on doing it in a gaming, I don't recommend many people buy that one as it's really casual gaming. Now, other than that, you on the base models, you're getting 512 on both of these, and you're also getting 16 gigabytes of RAM in both of these. And the good similarities between both these models is both of these have upgradable RAM slots, and they've both got two Gen 4 M.2 slots. So with that side of things, they're pretty much equal. So then let's take a quick look around them both and see what they're like size-wise and ports-wise. So here we are on the desk, two 17 inch laptops. Now the X17 is just a standard 16 by nine 17 inch machine. Whereas the XPS 9710 is a 16 by 10 17 inch machine. So you've got that better real estate for work. But despite having a slightly bigger screen in the XPS 17, you can see how much smaller this 17 inch laptop is than the X17. We've got the infinity bezel with the X17 9710 which instantly shrinks down the size of the laptop. And also on the X17, because of the extra cooling it needs to put in these like much heavier GPUs, you've got a big sort of vent on the back that sticks out of the back, which really increases the depth of this gaming laptop over the actual XPS. And then we look at the actual thickness of the laptops as well. You can see what a difference there is between these two models. But basically what that's giving you is obviously on a work machine, a very, very compact, slim and light laptop you can chuck in a bag, chuck around. And in all honesty, when you're moving around with this thing, it feels like you're using a 15 inch laptop and not a 17 inch laptop, especially when I'm putting it side by side with the X17. Now, before we look at the ports, let's just quickly talk about build quality. Both of these machines are built like a tank. Now you've got the aluminium build of the XPS 9710, which is absolutely amazing. It feels great. It will scuff or scratch as aluminium tends to do, but it does provide it with a solid chassis that feels great in the hand. The X17, on the other hand, being a gaming laptop, this has got a much more of a gamer vibe, and rather than being a metal finish, it's got a, a sort of a high endurance coating over the top. So it's some sort of a magnesium build, so it is still very solid, but you've got this sort of smooth feeling, high endurance coating finish, which sort of wears pretty well and gives it a very unique look. This X17 comes in the lunar light outer and dark side inner, it's got a completely different aesthetic to the standard silver and black of the XPS 9710. So let's take a quick look at the ports on both of these machines to see what you're getting if you buy either one of them. Now, if we look at the side of the machines, you can see straight away what's unusual with the X17 is you've literally got a headset jack on the right hand side of the machine. Whereas on the actual XPS 9710, you've got two Thunderbolt 4s, a full size SD card reader and a headset jack. Straight away on the side, it's more usable on that XPS 17. If we whiz round to the other side, on the Alienware X17, you can see we've got the power jack and then just venting. Whereas with the uh, XPS 9710, we've got two Thunderbolt 4 ports and a Kensington lock. Now, obviously not many people probably use the Kensington lock these days, but this is a work machine and certain offices do use these Kensington locks, which is why they still put them on there. Now, as we look to the backs of the machines, you can see the XPS, 9710 is clean, there's nothing on the back there. Whereas the X17, this is where all the ports are, the majority of the ports are on this laptop. And we've got a much better selection of ports overall on this X17 than we have on the XPS 9710. Because on the back, you can see we've got a mini display port, a micro SD card slot, a USB 3, an HDMI 2.1, a Thunderbolt 4 with power delivery, an Ethernet port, another USB 3, and a USB-C port. So 
a really good array of ports on the uh, X17, but unfortunately I would have preferred some of those ports to be on the side to make the machine slightly more usable in day-to-day -day use. But despite all the ports being on the back, the X17 is clearly the winner with regards to the ports as far as I'm concerned, just through the diversity of those ports. Right, we're back, we're logged in. Let's take a quick look around the decks of the machines themselves. Now, if we're looking at these side by side, you can see straight away, we've got the carbon fiber finish on the XPS 9510. This is a lovely soft touch material. And although it can pick up fingerprints and smudges, it does feel great when you've got this on your lap and you've got your hands on this and you're typing on it. And I do really love this. And it is quite easy to keep clean still, but you will be cleaning it regularly. You've still got a magnesium sort of palm rest that has got the high endurance coating with the Alienware. It still picks up fingerprints, they're not quite as easily as the carbon fiber on the XPS 9710. And it still feels quite good. It's much better than just like a standard MacBook Pro's sort of aluminium feel, the cold metal feel. This still is quite nice under your palm, but I definitely prefer the XPS 9710's finish and feel when I'm typing on these machines. As we look at the touchpads, you see such a massive difference in the size between the 9710 touchpad and the X17 touchpad. The 9710 is literally almost double the size and it is great when you are working and using the touchpad, which you're more likely to be doing on a work machine than you are on a gaming machine. I think Dell and other manufacturers think if you're buying a gaming machine, you're probably gonna have a mouse plugged in, especially if you're gaming, you'll be using a mouse. But if you're using it for work very often, you've got this on your lap, you're gonna be using the actual touchpad and it is much better on the XPS 9710. That said, there are still some touchpad issues out there where there are some touch rattle and some light double click issues with the XPS 9710s. And it's a shame that Dell hasn't worked those out, but we've had two in the office so far and both of ours have been good. So we've been very lucky. Another difference with regards to the touchpad is the X17, as this is the 3080 model of the Alienware, we have an RGB touchpad, which is quite a nice little feature with the 3080. Unfortunately, if you buy the 3060 or the 3070 version, you do not get the RGB touchpad, which is a real shame especially as at the moment in a lot of regions, the 3080 is still out of stock. Moving up to the keyboards, I much prefer the layout on the XPS 9710. The keyboard layout is very useful for somebody that's typing day in, day out. The main reason the layout is better is it's quite a standard keyboard. If you're used to Macs, you're used to sort of standard Windows keyboards, you're gonna be used to this keyboard. Now you do have the crushed up and down cursor keys, but I prefer that to what they've done with the solution on the X17 from Alienware. The cursor keys have been crammed up into the keyboard. So your up cursor is directly below your enter key. And that can cause you issues if you think you're pressing the space bar and you hit the up cursor and knock yourself out of alignment when you're typing. Now you do get used to this very quickly and it is sort of, you know, like a first world problem. But if you're typing day in, day out, this is definitely a better layout for you. The actual feel of the keys though, I have to give that to the Anywhere X17. The keyboard on this is absolutely amazing. It's one of the better keyboards out there for typing experience. It's got a brilliant actuation point. It's got a nice amount of travel and the keys just feel great to type on. So for the actual typing feel, I've got to give that to the Anywhere X17. With regards to the backlight, again, that goes to the Anywhere X17. You've got RGB per key keyboards that really is quite vibrant. Now, I know this is obviously, this is more for aesthetics, but, the backlighting on the XPS 9710 is very dim, whereas if you're in a sort of a low light room, the actual backlight on this X17 is much brighter and stronger, and therefore more visible for you. But we have another downside with the X17 as well, because obviously nothing's that easy. The secondary functions on the X17 are not backlit. And that's new for 2021 with Alienware. They've always used to be secondary functions backlit. But where they've added, I believe, the mechanical keyboard, I think they've changed the way the lighting is on these keyboards, and we no longer have that feature, and that is a real shame. Listening to the speakers, they sound like this. Okay, Alienware first at 50% volume. XPS. Now 80%. So there we have it. It's, it seems a little bit louder on the X17. 
but the actual quality of the speakers is just night and day better on the XPS 9710. As we move up to the screens, as I mentioned earlier on, the gaming Alienware X17 has the more traditional of, of late 16 by 9 screen ratio, which is great for gaming, but not so great for work. Whereas on the XPS 9710, we've moved back to the 16 by 10 aspect ratio, which anybody in work is going to love. You get that extra vertical real estate with this model, which is great for working spreadsheets or documents, whatever. That's really handy to have. Now, as I said, both of these are 17 inch screens. This one does look so much smaller because of the infinity bezel around the screen. And I think that does make this look absolutely stunning. Now the Alienware, they've certainly improved the bezels, but you can see what a difference between these two models. Now, other than the aspect ratio, both these machines are available in either a sort of 1080p or 1200p for the XPS, or moving up to a 4K. Now I've got the 1080p on the X17, and I've actually got the 4K Plus on the XPS 9710. So yes, this isn't a fair comparison when we're looking at quality, but as they are both available in both options, you can take your pick, but you will pay a very large upcharge when you're moving from a 1080p on either of these to the 4K. The 4K Plus model on the XPS 17, it is a fantastic screen to look at. It's really vibrant, it's 500 nits of brightness. I absolutely love using it, it's touch enabled if you like that, I personally don't, but there are a lot of people that do use the touch screens on these machines. But with regards to gaming, you are limited. It's a 60 hertz panel and it's not the fastest response time either. Whereas on the actual Alienware, this is the 1080p base model. And although it's only 1080p, it's a fast panel. It's 165 hertz and it's got decent sort of response times. So when we're looking at the UFO test, you can see a lot of blur on the XPS 9710, whereas on the X17, that UFO is moving smoothly across the screen, which when you're gaming, that's what you're gonna to wanna to see. Now, obviously the X17 does have a 4K model available as well, and that is also high refresh 120 hertz like this base panel. So if you still want that 4K for work and you want a game on the side, that's probably the option to get because you get the benefits of a 4K screen, but it's still great for gaming. Now I have had some time gaming on this XPS 9710, and despite being a slow panel, it wasn't an awful experience. I played a fair bit of Apex on it and it was still enjoyable. But if you've got these machines side by side and you're looking at something like a fast paced shooter, you're gonna to wanna to play it on this X17. It's such a difference, it's so much smoother, it's crisp. But if this is only a device, if you're primarily working and the gaming is sort of a secondary for you after you've finished a day of work, this is still a good machine to use. You know, you've got 3060 on the upgraded model in here and you can game nicely without any throttling with this machine too. Especially good if it's an RPG or a strategy game where you're not so bothered about high speed sort of input and reaction times with say like a gaming laptop. So as we move above the screen, both of these have got webcams that sound like this. So this is the webcam and the microphones on the new Anywhere X17 laptop. And this is what the webcam and the microphones look and sound like on the XPS 9710. And with both these ranges, we've also got Windows Hello, which is my favorite way of logging into these machines. You open the lid, it scans your face, it logs you in, and they've both, all the whole range of these come with this, and it's something I absolutely love. It's my favorite way of logging into Windows. But if you don't like Windows Hello, or you don't want to have it enabled because you're worried about people using your webcam for whatever reason, you block your webcam off, you do have a fingerprint reader on the XPS 9710 as well, so the power button doubles as a fingerprint reader to log you in. You don't get that with the X17, so this is something that's quite nice with the XPS 9710. Now it almost feels unfair to compare performance as clearly the Alienware with its much larger chassis is going to perform better. So rather than just spam benchmarks, I want to talk about the cooling systems on each of these machines. The Dell XPS 9510 manages to get in an 8 core 11th gen CPU and up to an RTX 3060 in this slim and light chassis thanks to its vapor chamber cooling that they've installed. Now although the performance is amazing for the size of this machine, it isn't perfect. CPU performance on its own is pretty impressive and Dell will let it boost about 80 watts giving it a good Cinebench result, but it's still a fair way behind performance of the X17 due to its four cooling fan system, a vapor chamber and bigger exhausts that have much better airflow. The X17 is able to maintain full boosts on the 11800H CPU indefinitely. This is even more evident when we look at the GPU performance. The XPS can handle about a 70 watt TGP on the 3060. That pales in comparison to the 165 watts of the 3080 option, or even the 130 watts of the 3060 option. This is an area where gaming laptops just destroy work laptops. These content creation laptops are all about being thin and light, and here you can see the trade-offs. Now when we put the CPU and GPU load onto the XPS, the GPU is still allowed at 70 watts, but the CPU is capped at about 25 watts. 
This makes games playable, but you won't be playing at such high frame rates as you would be in esports titles like you would on the X17. The X17, as expected, can run its CPU and GPU at full wattage. Now we focus this on gaming here, as this is an easy way to show the full load of the systems. But this could also equate to heavy 3D workloads, such as video exports, heavy CAD, 3D modeling, or machine learning. The X17 is gonna be clearly the hands down winner. And if you are gaming, then the high refresh screen makes a world of difference to any fast paced games. As even though they're all playable on the XPS, they feel so much better and so much more fluid on the X17. So as you can see, although the XPS performs admirably, it is not in the same league as the X17 for heavy loads. But performance isn't everything. What about the heat and fan noise? Well, the X17 is amazing when it comes to heat management, and in particular, the palm rest and the deck of the machine. And this is something where if you're gaming or if you're doing a lot of heavy load, the machine doesn't heat up on the palm rest, and this is really lovely. There's nothing worse than getting scorched palms or sweaty palms because your keyboard is heating up to over 40 degrees centigrade. Now the XPS 9710, it does heat up a bit. It's not uncomfortable, but it's not quite, again, in the same league as the X17. Now when we come to fan noise, both of these can hit about 50 decibels on full load. But I have to be honest, the XPS 9710 has a slightly nicer sounding fan noise at that 50 decibels. And when we're talking about idle noise, the XPS 9710 is almost silent and is much nicer to use in an ambient sort of silent room as opposed to the X17 where you can constantly hear the rumble of the fans. So then, why even buy an XPS content creation laptop over a gaming laptop? Well, maybe you're not gonna be running heavy loads 24 seven. Maybe you're only gonna be gaming on the side. You don't necessarily need a heavy duty laptop if you know that your loads are gonna be a bit lighter. So what you're gonna be basically getting with the XPS 9710 is a laptop that can still run everything and run everything well, but is slimmer, lighter, much more portable and easy to cart around than a gaming laptop. So there are definitely some advantages to still getting an XPS 9710 over an actual X17. And then there's the battery life. The XPS 9710 battery life if you get the full HD panel, you're gonna get incredible battery life up to about 10 hours of light use. And then if you get the 4K plus screen, it does drain battery quite a lot more, but you're still looking at about six, six and a half hours of battery life. In comparison, the X17, the full HD model gets you about five hours in optimus mode, and the actual 4K model, you are probably talk about two to three hours in light use. So you can clearly see here, if you are using this for work and you're on the go, this does certainly have some advantages and it's much easier to just plug in a power bank or plug it into a screen and carrying on on the go than a gaming laptop. And also, whilst we're talking about portability, the XPS 9710 comes as a sleek, compact, 130 watt USB-C power brick. The X17, if you buy the 3060 or the 3070 model, then you're getting an equally sleek power brick. But if you buy the 38 model, because you want all that power, then unfortunately you're in for a rough time because you're gonna get the 330 watt huge Dell power brick. Now Dell, if you're listening out there, this has been 10 years that you've been supplying this 330 watt. The people that are buying these expensive flagship laptops, they deserve the same treatment that you've given for the 240 watt PSU, a slimmer light version to match this slimmer light laptop. So come on, you're making enough money. So this leads me to the conclusion. These are two incredible, very expensive flagship machines and two very different use cases. But as I mentioned earlier, the technology has improved for these machines so much over the years that both of these machines can pretty much do anything you want out of any software, game, or any other task that you require from a laptop these days. So which should you buy? Well, I can say for anybody that prioritizes performance, the X17 is a clear winner here. It can run flat out 24 seven, it's pleasant, it's cool, it can game amazingly, you've got a high refresh screen, it is a really fantastic machine. And it's not overly expensive if you go for one of the base models. Only when you get up to the 4K screen and the 3080s are you really pushing the boat out with this model. But if you need to be mobile, if you need the battery, if you're like carting your machine into offices and meetings, then maybe the XPS is the model for you. Maybe you're not be using the machine full load 24 seven, or maybe you're only a light or casual gamer. This is also a fantastic package. And I do love the screen. This 4K plus screen is absolutely incredible, especially for content creators. Now for me, this is quite an easy choice. I do a lot of heavy duty work and I game a lot. So I would always pick the X17. 
I'm not so bothered about the portability. I'm not bothered about battery life. I love the performance this machine offers. I love the keyboard, but I love the gaming experience on this machine. It stays cool and I love the high response screen. This is a great package for me personally. But I can still look at that XPS 9710 and look at that beautiful 4K plus screen and I do sometimes get a little bit jealous. But what about you? Of these two machines, which would you choose? Would you go for the XPS 9710 or would you go for the X17? Please leave your comments down below and if you haven't subscribed, please consider doing so. We've got plenty more comparisons and loads more content coming soon. And lastly, thanks for watching.